Hey everyone, in today's video we are going to be completely relamping this Marantz receiver. Well, actually it's already been relamped and I'm recording this after I've already taken off the footage for this video. I used to do this pretty often, maybe in 2015-2016, uh, but I've since moved on to automotive projects to uh, take up my time. And I haven't done too much work with the uh, vintage receivers in a little while, so that's going to show in some of this footage. I'm a little bit rusty, I make a few mistakes and some bad decisions, but I talk about all of that as I walk through this. So the end result is a good comprehensive video that shows you everything you need to know to replace every single bulb in this receiver and what options are available to you for replacing those bulbs. However, it's going to be kind of long, so I have marked below in the description some timestamps of certain areas that you might be interested in. So you can kind of toggle around through there and get to what you need to get to in order to learn what you want to learn. It's worth noting that this is a model 2250B which is what I call a Gen 2 Marantz stereo receiver. A few things worth noting about the Gen 2's is they have a plastic housing, which we'll talk a lot about in this video. It's kind of a bad thing. Gen 1's don't have this, they have a metal housing, so there's not any uh, warping or melting to worry about or cracking. I have not serviced a Gen 3 or 4 Marantz receiver, so I don't know too much about them, but I think they are fairly similar to this. Another thing about these receivers is that some of them do not have indicator lamps, and some of them only have one meter. That means some of these have more bulbs than others, and inside some of these are laid out differently, and they, the bulbs might be easier to get to, or they might be harder to get to, like on the 2250B where the uh, tuning cut is right in front, right where all the bulbs need to be. Some of them, the dial string is easier to get out of the way. On this one it's particularly difficult. Without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do to replace the lamps is begin taking apart the receiver. We're going to start by taking off the faceplate. First thing you do to remove the faceplate is remove these knobs right here. Some of these receivers have six knobs like this one, some of them have five. Some of them might have even more. But uh, they all come off by simply pulling. Sometimes this happens, and you might think to yourself, I just ruined my beautiful prized Marantz, what am I going to do? Well, you didn't, and I will show you exactly how you fix this issue toward the end of the video when we're putting it back together. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking, I'm taking my fingers like this, on both sides just to get a really good grip, and I pull straight back. Next thing you'll do is put these off to the side, and leave them in the order in which you took them off and that will give you an easier time when you put them back on. Next we'll take off the bounce slider, this is on Gen 2 and 3 models and that was easy. Now we'll work on the four faceplate screws. These are 8mm on Gen 2's so you'll need this or on Gen 1's you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. So very carefully take them off. Don't push the socket really close to the faceplate, otherwise the rotation of the socket against the faceplate may leave a uh, circular scratch. Last thing we'll need to do is remove this little guy right here. Some of these receivers have a, uh, have a nut right here that can be uh, removed with a deep socket. Others have this, where it's got these two slits right here. Now, I've already loosened this, and I know I can get it off with just my fingernail. So I'm going to take my thumbnail, and I'm going to put it in here, and then hold the back of the receiver and kind of push and turn. There's that. And once that's done, the faceplate slides right off. And if you haven't done so already, remove the screws holding on your top cover, and remove your top cover and put it in a place where you won't step on it. Ask me how I know that's a good idea. Next thing you'll want to do is remove this black piece right here that keeps the uh, tuner pointer string out of the way. And 
Now at this point some of you might be wondering, Age fix it, why are you doing it that way? I thought you only had to go in through the back and you don't have to take off the faceplate for this. Well, that's true, but after we remove this piece right here we're going to see why that's not always a good idea. So to remove this piece, take your tuner pointer, lift it up, and let it kind of sit right there so it's out of the way. Pro tip, this is extremely fragile and this isn't the best way to do this, so as long as you're taking extreme, extreme care not to break that, you'll be okay. Next we'll take our Phillips head screwdriver, and this applies to Gen 2 models. Gen 1's don't have these screws here, or this black piece right here. We'll remove these two screws, exposing this guy right here, and this is held in by adhesive and nothing else. So what you'll want to do is take a small screwdriver, flathead kind of like this one, and you can kind of start up here and uh, kind of run it along here, again watching out for this, separating this plastic from the chassis of the receiver by breaking the adhesive. Now this has already been taken apart, so once you get it to a certain point you'll be able to do this, and you can just kind of go like that, wiggle it all around and eventually it will uh, come free. So now that we have the tutor pointer out of the way and we have the faceplate off, we can see why it is the best to change the bulbs this way. If we zoom in right here, we see that this plastic housing that's holding the fuse lamps has melted. Now this happens because the incandescent bulbs generate heat and especially if you put the wrong milliamp rating bulb in this receiver, which this one had done to it at some point, this melting will get even worse. And the reason that you need to do it this way now is because if you were to do it from inside the receiver, you wouldn't be able to get it out because the plastic has melted around these uh, these little clips here. So you can't get this out. So that's why you go in from this way and then it allows you to replace your vellum paper along the way because you know, this is no bueno. You don't want this in your receiver. You want fresh paper. To remove them, just take your flathead screwdriver and start prying away. Get at it from one side and you'll be able to get it out. Now throughout this video you're going to be seeing quite a bit of this. This entire assembly moving around like so. And the reason this is happening a lot is because of this screw right here. This is supposed to have some plastic tabs around it that kind of hold this entire assembly to the chassis of the receiver since this plastic piece snaps into the chassis right along here. But frankly this is a horribly designed piece of plastic and what happens is these plastic tabs break. You can see what's left of the one right there. And on the other side, they're just completely gone. They're supposed to operate like these guys here on the uh, on the meter lamp assembly, but there's a lot more plastic to grab onto here, so that's a much better design. But over here, that's not the case. But wait, don't these have bulbs too? Yes, they do. And these we will replace from behind. We replace these guys by removing this screw and this screw. You know what? You don't even have to remove those because this whole thing just slides right out. Now, be careful not to snag it on anything. You can pull all the way out here and just pull these guys out with our fingers. Pretty easy. Next, we're going to prepare the indicator lamps for replacement. Now unfortunately you need a soldering iron to replace the indicator lamps. They are all on this circuit board here with all these big pins coming out of it. You can see in between each large pin there are uh, two smaller pins and those are the light bulbs. So in order to solder these you can risk it and have this string right here but that's not a good idea. So what I like to do is take some scotch tape and just put it around certain pulleys on the uh, tuner. And what that's going to do is it's just going to keep the string in place 
because I'm going to remove it. So I'll try to get one down here under the uh, tuning cap. Just get it in there. It's not that tough. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my screwdriver and just kind of work this string off the pulley. And then I can take my needle carefully, put it over there where this isn't going to be in the way anymore. Next, what we'll do is remove the screws that hold the circuit board in place. Two screws. Then you just pull this board out carefully and you have your indicator lamps right here. Next we're going to get the tuner pointer bulb ready for replacement. On this model we have two plastic snaps here and here. On other models this is just a plastic housing or maybe it's metal, I don't remember. It's just wrapped in tape so for those you would just take a razor blade and slit the tape but on this since it's got plastic snaps we'll take again small flathead screwdriver be very careful not to break this. We'll just slide it under. It can be a little tricky. So this one's released. And this one will come off too. Looks like there's a little bit of glue inside of there. Yes, there is. And then this bulb should be able to just yank it right out. And there you go. Set this off to the side. There's your bulb. First, let's replace the vellum paper. To do this, you just rip it off. But you'll want to try to do it in a way that you keep the paper all in one piece. Because that's going to allow you to cut a new piece that is exactly the correct size for this uh, piece right here. Okay, so we'll take this. Now, as you can see, there is a massive difference between this paper and the new paper. And if you look right there, you can see there is an absolutely massive difference between the old paper and the new paper in terms of how much light's getting through, what color it is. You're definitely going to want to replace your vellum paper if it has not been replaced in the past. Next thing you'll do is take some of this stuff. I don't think it really matters what glue you use, but this seems to work well for me. You'll apply, which I think I like to put it on the plastic itself. You apply a light bead along there and there. Place your vellum on top. And then what I like to do is I like to put this in a piece of printer paper and then put it in like a large book or a textbook or something and let it dry for a little bit so that we can uh, let the glue set and uh, truly adhere the vellum to the, uh, the plastic here. One thing worth noting is that the weight of the vellum paper you use is important. If you use too light of a weight you will see hot spots in your display especially with LEDs because they don't have as much of a surface area that's actually uh, producing light so this is 48 pound vellum paper. I think I could go even higher, but I bought this per the recommendation of uh, another Marantz enthusiast back in the day. You can see it the, the point of the vellum paper is to diffuse the light. So you can, you can see my fingers when they're right up to the paper, but then as I move them back, you can't see them very well at all. But the dial is not the only place where there's vellum paper on this receiver. There's also two pieces of vellum paper right behind these two meters right here. First what I'm going to do is remove these two screws because what we're really trying to do is get this plastic housing out of the way so that we have full access to the back of these meters. What you'll see in this video is that I ended up cutting the wires allowing me to slide the plastic housing away from the meters and give me access to the vellum paper. 
I don't recommend doing this because it's kind of difficult to solder the wires back together. A better way to do this is to cut the wires as close to the ring terminals as you can, then heating up those ring terminals, removing the solder, and getting those little wire fragments that are wrapped around the terminals out very carefully. That way, you are able to strip the wires and then put them back in those ring terminals and create a nice new solder joint. So now we can see our vellum paper. Again, this is glued in just like the paper on the, uh, the dial. So, you can take your nail and just slowly work the paper off of the, uh, the meter here. There's that. Rip it at the top so you can bring it down. And then at the bottom, it looks like it was already free anyways because of how old it is. And there you have it. Two old yellow pieces of vellum paper. Now replacing the meter vellum is very simple, just like with the dial vellum. You just take your original piece, fold it out so that it's straight, and you'll put it on your fresh vellum paper and just trace it with a pencil and you'll get your new shape, meter. I cut. Otherwise it does not need to be perfect. For me I already had another one just laying around so I only have to make one today. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to put this around the meter. I'm going to check for a good fit. And then I'm going to take this part and I'm going to fold it like so. And I'll do the same thing with the bottom. For the bottom, I'm just going to get the, uh, just kind of like the bottom edge there, because what I can do now is I can pull this back out, and I see that I've found my edge here. I can just take this fold and complete it outside of the receiver, and we'll go all the way down. So we have a nice, good bend there. Same thing with up here because what's going to happen when we glue is the paper is going to want to spring back up if we don't do this. We'll test fit that again just to make sure it fits well. Now I think we're ready to take our glue and begin applying this to the meter. We'll take our Aline's Tacky Glue. Very, very light bead. Very light layer of the glue. Now we can carefully come in here, don't get glue on the meter face, and then press that down, then go underneath with this finger. Some models this is easier to get to, this one is a little bit more difficult, so I'm going to need a, uh, a flat thing to uh, kind of apply pressure under there, so There's two little tabs right here that uh, the plastic housing is going to want to set into before you can get these screws to come down. So now that we have this receiver taken apart to where we can replace all of these bulbs, the next big question is, do I use incandescents or LEDs? What color do I use? You have lots of options right here, and I'm going to tell you where you can find them. So to find replacement lights, you could go on eBay, or you could go contact Dave at dgwojo.com. Dave is an audiophile that I've met, and he is very passionate about vintage gear, and he carries just about every bulb you can think of for pretty much any vintage receiver that's out there. 
For the Marantz, he carries everything that replaces the bulbs on here. He carries incandescents, he carries LEDs, and that goes for both the bi pins and the fuse lamps. And he even has hardware for the Marantz, like these top cover screws. My receiver didn't come with top cover screws, so it's a great thing that he has those in stock. So the best thing about Dave carrying all these different bulb options is I'm able to make a video showing you exactly what all these bulbs look like inside of this receiver when they're turned on. So I'm going to be showing you what normal incandescent looks like. Light blue LED, warm white, cool white, and he even gave me some extras, a deep blue and a green. So those will be interesting to see. So, if you need replacement lamps for your Marantz or other vintage gear, go to dgwojo.com and send Dave an email. Alright, so let's talk replacement lamps. First, let's start with incandescents. Even though incandescent lights generate heat, use more energy, and will burn out sooner than an LED, I think that this is the best option. And I think this for a few reasons. One, it's the original intended application for the receiver. It's going to look exactly like it did when it was new, and you know that it's going to work, and it's going to, it's going to be very good for you. The second thing is, with incandescence, if you look at this piece here, the Marantz engineers very, very carefully chose what color this plastic is. And that's because they wanted it to be a certain color when it gets put behind an incandescent light. Only an incandescent bulb is going to give you the proper color to get this signature greenish bluish color out of this uh, out of this dial face. I think that's one of the coolest colors ever personally so that's why I really like to use incandescents as the replacements. However, that's just my opinion. If you want to use LEDs there's lots of options available for you. The next thing is these bi-pin lamps. My preferred choice for replacing these is actually LED. And I think that because if you look at the plastic here and you see what color it is, it's actually mostly a clear, whitish color. So what that means is when you have a cool white LED shining through this, it basically looks white. And I think that's really cool next to the greenish color made by the incandescents. Or you can just go standard incandescent replacement and it'll look it'll look OEM again. There's one thing to keep in mind with these bi pins, and that is uh, how LEDs behave with the stereo lamp. So the stereo lamp on Marantz receivers uh, comes from a circuit that sends DC current to the bulb. I've had some situations where I've replaced the stereo indicator on a Marantz receiver like this and it has either flickered or gone dim or just behaved very strangely. This circuit that the stereo light is on was not designed for an LED. It was designed for an incandescent bulb or more or less just a standard resistor. So. I have had some luck with stereo with uh, I use red LEDs on these uh, stereo indicators, but I've had more failures than successes. So what I'm going to do with this receiver is I'm going to replace the stereo indicator with a standard incandescent light, and I'm going to replace these guys with LEDs because they are okay with the AC current that comes out of the uh, of the power supply. On this particular receiver, we have a Dolby light, and as you, as you can see in the plastic here, it's going to light up red, just like the stereo light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an incandescent in place of the Dolby light, just like the stereo light, so they look the same color when they're turned on. So, that's my explanation on LED versus incandescent. Let's put some bulbs in and see what they look like. This is warm white. This is cool white. This is light blue. Before, after vellum paper replacement. This is 
is form white. It says cool white. This is light blue. So I've got the exposure turned down on the camera and what this one's going to show is one color bulb in each of the five sockets with these being standard incandescent. So this is kind of cool, it kind of shows you what each bulb looks like so I'll just point that out right now. This is warm white, this is cool white, this is light blue, this is deep blue, and this is deep green. As you can see, this is the color we're kind of going for. This is the baseline. The incandescent bulb makes this color. And uh, the warm white, in my opinion, does surprisingly bad. It looks a lot more blue than uh, I would expect it to, being uh, you know, warm white. I think that the cool blue is probably your uh, best option here because the cool white and the warm white, they just look dim compared to the cool blue. Deep blue, I think that's uh, an acquired taste, it's a little too blue for me. And this green is actually really cool in my opinion. I haven't seen this with the uh, deep blue or the green before. And I kind of like this. So now with, let me just take the faceplate off real quick. And I'll just show you inside what exactly is going on. So again, I told you what colors they are. Now you can clearly see the colors here. So that's what it looks like. So now what I've got in here is a green, a deep blue, and a standard incandescent. And I'll just show you what that looks like underneath there. Again, let's take the exposure down so we can uh, get a better idea of what that looks like. So, the green is pretty cool, but as you can see, the uh, the original Marantz color, this, is really tough to uh, match with an LED, it seems. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to replace these middle ones with LEDs, cool white LEDs, because they go with the uh, the indicators right here. Then I'm going to replace this one with an incandescent because I'm going to talk about how the stereo light circuit on Marantz receivers is kind of interesting. You don't always want to replace it with an LED. So I'm going to replace this with an incandescent because of the circuitry. And then because of the coloring, I'm going to replace this with this one with an incandescent as well. But these guys going through this uh, white plastic here, they'll look really cool with the uh, cool white LEDs. So without further ado, I will get started on removing them. If you don't have a uh, solder vacuum like this, you will definitely want to get something like this. I don't know the form formal name for this, but they're very cheap, and uh, you'll want to use this to get the solder off of these uh, pins. Sometimes you don't get all the solder out and you gotta heat the joint up to uh, really let things uh, move out. And there it is, all nice and flush with the uh, circuit board. So now what we can do is uh, make sure we don't have anything that could cause a short and uh, test them out. I'll just tell you right now, this is not safe. So there's the one, the uh, stereo indicator has turned on. And uh, I'll just go through the uh, functions here. We see we have light for everything, and then we have to switch to FM to get the Dolby light. 
and Dolby Light works too, so that is fantastic. Okay, let's put this back together. Last bulb to replace is the tuner pointer bulb. Now, first thing you do is you cut this, like I've done here. We don't need this anymore. Now, I've chosen to replace this with an LED bulb instead of an incandescent because this is going to match the LEDs that I've replaced in the uh, indicator lamp section. So, to do this, we're going to need to cut this wire to length. This receiver is supposed to have one of those. Uh, post back here for uh, the tuner pointer wire but it's not there so I'm gonna source that at a different time or put like a hold down here but until then we still need to get this length correct so as you can see this is kinda centered with this and the wire is gonna wanna go between here and there so the longest point is going to be from here to here so what I'm going to do is since I've got the pointer a certain way unhooked. I'm going to put it to the farthest position. I'm going to put the bulb in here and then I'm just gonna measure from here to here and I see that it's about there and you'll wanna put some slack in it. You definitely can't have too much but you can certainly have not enough. And uh, I will just take this wire, go back even more just for safety, and then I'll just snip it again like so. that gives us plenty of length to uh, attach to here. And then I'm going to, since this is twisted, I'm going to just take some time and twist this thing all the way down. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then I'll strip these guys. And if you buy your bulbs from Dave, he might send you some heat shrink, especially if you buy a new tuner pointer bulb. I didn't buy a tuner pointer bulb, but I got this anyway, so that's really awesome that he sent this. So, we'll take two pieces, maybe about an inch in length, Ooh. and then put them on right now. Because when you solder these, you can't put this on. Ask me how I know that. I'll put them like this, and then I'll twist them together. I'll put my safety glasses on. I'll get my solder and my soldering iron. You don't need very much. Then let that cool a little bit and you'll be able to take your heat shrink. I'll slide this over like so. And then if you have a heat gun use that but I don't so I'm just going to take a lighter and do it that way. And that's all there is to it. If you have this, like you're supposed to, then you would just hook this wire back down and get the length right so that you have enough wire to go from here to here, like so. Okay, now that we have this together, we'll take these two pieces that we definitely did not lose or break and put the bulb in like so. See this little cutout right here? That's for the pointer. I'd put one snap in first, and then engage the second one like so. And there you have it. Let's test that out and make sure it works real quick. Okay. So I either got the polarity right or it doesn't matter. So there you have it. And now we're going to put in our brand new incandescent replacement bulbs. And they go in just like this. And there it is. This is the first time we are seeing the uh, incandescent and LEDs put together. Now we are ready to reapply the uh, plastic face here, this guy. I have glued the vellum paper back in place, 
and we're going to do the same thing but on this end. First, we'll take our flathead and we'll kind of work some of this extra adhesive off and uh, ripped off the velvet paper. Carefully get that off. You can also, once it's started, kind of start to peel with your fingers. Like so. Or you can just take your thumb and keep doing this until the adhesive kind of rolls up. So that's pretty good. So now what I'll do is I will take my glue. I will put a little bit on a Q-tip here. And I'll just very carefully paint this on along here. Next I'll take this piece, just push it against here to get it set correctly, and then just apply some pressure, kind of alternate with where you're applying pressure to Once you've done that, you can take this metal trim piece again, but wipe it off first because it's very dusty. Now that we've got our plastic on, we can take this guy and put it back on. Very good. Next we'll get the Tudor pointer string back on. We'll take this guy. Set it back in. Looks like this one goes like this, and this one goes on here. Make sure that the uh, string is properly wrapped around this pulley here, and that the wraps are not overlapping, otherwise you'll get some grinding noises when you're uh, going through the stations. You can probably remove this piece of tape at this point, so it's out of our way. I'll probably fix that later. We can get it around this right here and just work it on there like so. And then boom, you got a working tutor pointer again. And then we'll put this guard back on. Just to make sure it works. And if it does, you are good to go. Next thing I'll do is I'll take this faceplate and I'll just wash it with a very soft sponge and some dish soap and then go over it with some Windex and that'll make it look a lot nicer. Not too bad. For these guys, take this to start with, put it in, say, tape 2 on this one, then take this line and line it up with the dot the best you can, and then it'll slide right on. Same thing with this one. Now, we may remember that we pulled just the aluminum covering off of this one when we removed it. The way you fix this is quite simple. Just, uh, just put a little extra glue there. That's all you need, really. And then make sure you line it up just right. Once you know you're lined up perfectly with the uh, dot on the faceplate, push it on, and you're all set. A little tiny bit of glue. Take a look here and just kind of push it on the best I can. And there you have it, folks. 
Okay, so in review, we have replaced all the fuse lamps with standard incandescence, the pointer with an LED, the indicators with LED, but the red ones were replaced with incandescent. So let's see how this looks now. This receiver needs a new power switch. Wow. That looks awesome. This is such a massive improvement from what it was before. Now that we have clear, clean vellum paper, we see that the color is true and good looking and original to what it's supposed to be. Same with the meters. And this white LED, the addition of these white LEDs really brings this uh, receiver into the uh, 21st century in a tasteful manner, in my opinion. Now, something's wrong with the stereo indicator. I'm going to have to dive quite a bit deeper into that because it's something to do with the circuitry. So, you'll just have to watch uh, one of the future videos on that to see uh, why it's not working. I know this video was a little bit all over the place and it had a lot of information in it, but I hope you learned something or that it gave you the confidence to uh, go ahead and uh, try doing this on your own receiver. Be sure to subscribe because this receiver will be getting a full restoration and I'm going to be detailing each step that I take to uh, get to what I would describe as a fully restored receiver. So again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.